We may never know for sure whether Donald Trump colluded with Vladimir Putin to obtain Russia's help in the 2016 election in return for, say, Trump's help in weakening NATO and not interfering against Russian aggression in Ukraine. Trump and his propaganda machine at Fox News have so aggressively undermined the legitimacy of Robert Mueller's inquiry, repeatedly conjuring a witch hunt and maintaining a drumbeat of no collusion, that Mueller's report, whatever it shows, will almost surely be overwhelmed by a fog of alt interpretation and epistemological confusion. What's collusion? What's illegal? What's unethical? Has Trump been vindicated or not? The real danger is that as attention inevitably turns to the 2020 campaign, controversy over the Mueller report will obscure the far more basic issues of Trump's competence and character. An American president is not just the chief executive of the United States, and the office he, eventually she, holds is not just a bully pulpit to advance policy ideas. He is also a moral leader, and the office is a moral pulpit invested with meaning about the common good. As George Washington's biographer, Douglas Southall Freeman, explained, the first president believed he had been entrusted with something of immense intrinsic worth and that his duty was to uphold it for its own sake and over the long term. He led by moral example. FEW of our subsequent presidents have come close to the example Washington set, but none to date has been as far from that standard as Trump. In the 2016 presidential campaign, when accused of failing to pay his income taxes, Trump responded that makes me smart. His comment conveyed a message to millions of Americans that paying taxes in full is not an obligation of citizenship. Trump boasted about giving money to politicians so they would do whatever he wanted. When they call, I give. And you know what, when I need something from them two years later, three years later, I call them. They are there for me. In other words, it's perfectly okay for business leaders to pay off politicians, regardless of the effect on our democracy. Trump sent another message by refusing to reveal his tax returns during the campaign or even when he took office or to put his businesses into a blind trust to avoid conflicts of interest and by his overt willingness to make money off his presidency by having foreign diplomats stay at his Washington hotel and promoting his various golf clubs. These were not just ethical lapses. They directly undermined the common good by reducing the public's trust in the office of the president. A president's most fundamental responsibility is to uphold and protect our system of government. Trump has weakened that system. When, as a presidential nominee, he said a particular federal judge shouldn't be hearing a case against him because the judge's parents were Mexican, Trump did more than insult a member of the judiciary. He attacked the impartiality of America's legal system. When Trump threatened to loosen federal libel laws so he could sue news organizations that were critical of him and, later, to revoke the licenses of networks critical of him, he wasn't just bullying the media. He was threatening the freedom and integrity of the press. When, as president, he equated neo Nazis and Ku Klux Klan members with counter protesters in Charlottesville, Virginia by blaming both sides for the violence, he wasn't being neutral. He was condoning white supremacists, thereby undermining equal rights. When he pardoned Joe Arpaio, the former sheriff of Maricopa County, Arizona, for a criminal contempt conviction, he wasn't just signaling it's okay for the police to engage in brutal violations of civil rights. He was also subverting the rule of law by impairing the judiciary's power to force public officials to abide by court decisions. Advertisement. When he criticized NFL players for kneeling during the national anthem, he wasn't really asking that they demonstrate their patriotism. He was disrespecting their, and, indirectly, everyone's, freedom of speech. In all these ways, Trump undermined core values of our democracy. This is the essence of Trump's failure, not that he has chosen one set of policies over another or has divided rather than united Americans or even that he has behaved in childish and vindictive ways on becoming a president.
it is that he has sacrificed the processes and institutions of American democracy to achieve his goals. By saying and doing whatever it takes to win, he has abused the trust we place in a president to preserve and protect the nation's capacity for self-government. The Mueller report must not obscure this basic reality.